it's Mitchell Gad here, and if I'm not on ATR, I'm listening to ATR. Okay, Test Line Round Podcast. We are at the Hummus World Cup. We're at the Hummus World Cup. The impact. It's incredible what the impact that this tournament has had. Not just from a football perspective, but you know, it's far more important. Never is it yeah. more than a game being more apt. We are about to interview Michael Sheen. About Michael Sheen, Sheen says about himself. Right, we are a Touchline Round podcast. We are very, very pleased. Honoured is a good word to use. We're here with Mr. Michael Sheen. Thank you very much for a few minutes of your time. And most importantly, thank you very much for helping to bring, helping to bring the uh, this tournament to Cardiff. Important. That's the main thing, you know. Watching you and the passion that you have for this tournament has been inspiring. We're both Cardiff Black Boys, and having this here. Ah. It's been an incredible week, you know, we're here, it's the last day today, we've got all the finals taking part now today, um, and uh, the standard of football has been incredible, it has. you know, not just not just brilliant football, but also the passion that's out there, yes. I mean, it Every matters player. so much to play, yeah, like, uh, you know, yesterday uh, uh, there was this, <laughs> the game between Zimbabwe and uh, USA, and it was an incredibly tight match, it was really exciting, and right at the end, Zimbabwe scored a goal to win it and it was scored by a man with one foot <laughs> I mean it was incredible um, I saw the, the Bulgarian team every match they've played they've thrown themselves into it and their goalkeeper is the most committed football player I've ever seen they lost to Brazil and he was inconsolable stopping on the floor um, you know this is how much it matters to people but what's also amazing is knowing that no matter what the, uh, the scores are no matter what the results are um, this is changing people's lives. You know, just having the experience at all yeah. uh, is 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 first of all an incredible achievement, a testament to the resilience of people. Because the fact that they're here at all, representing their countries, some of the most marginalised and uh, and isolated people, you know, yeah. in our communities and communities all around the world, the fact that they're here at all is extraordinary. Um, but having this experience is it creates change you know it's the catalyst for what can happen in the future because i know because i've been with the welsh team players who've gone through this experience and i've seen how it's changed their lives yeah. so that's you know as apart from just being entertained by the football and just be and loving it and being completely compelled by it i keep remembering oh yeah people people are having this experience it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be all worthy and earnest just the fact that it's happening yeah. means that this is going to create huge change and that's amazing so you've provided a voice and a platform for change what do you consider to be a lasting legacy of this tournament well that's what we're going to see you know that's what we're going to find out i wanted to make sure that um that we had the opportunity to build on what has happened this week um because I, I didn't know what was going to happen this week until it happened no, no, so no. yeah so <clears throat> what i've done is uh, I said, the company i set up in order to deliver the tournament is going to continue on now afterwards i'm going to employ uh, a full-time legacy coordinator that's the posh name for it it's just essentially someone who goes right how can we keep this moving forward yeah. in the most effective way possible <clears throat> all the relationships and the collaborations that have been in place to deliver the tournament we're going to now move forward with yeah. and talk about so for instance Cardiff City Council are one of the tournament uh, you know uh, deliverers the cause yeah. or, or they're the ones yeah their events team yeah. is who's put on all the infrastructure and all that yeah. kind of stuff so we've now got a relationship with the council we're going to talk about now well how can we work on these issues in a more effective way you know how can we bring people together who yeah. maybe have had a bit of a shout at each other in the past yeah. how can we actually work together now and of course at the heart of everything is the people who are experiencing it themselves yeah, the homeless community here in Cardiff and the people who are on the front line of, uh, of helping the them yeah. Yeah. that's a good thing we, we Cardiff, it's almost felt it's the perfect time and the perfect city as to host this aware. tournament. We've this got is our home city. We're, we're aware of the issues. That we've happen. got huge. Uh, we've got big charities doing wonderful things in Cardiff as well, like you know the Wallach and the Huggards and, and, and Big Moose as well. You know, and it's 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 brilliant watching the visibility of these people who we we love. They're great people at the mm. Wallach and the Hugger. and the visibility of those charities now from this tournament as well. It is going to benefit them for years and years and years into the future you yeah. know, to continue the great work that they do. And it also means that when you walk down Cardiff City Centre, you're not just seeing tents, you're seeing people affected by something which they shouldn't be affected by. Yeah. And we're going to, and it's as a, as a city, we can, we can do so much more and we can help them. 
I think people are now seeing that. It changes and it's, the stigma around it. It does. It does. I hope so, yeah. I mean, my, my journey with this, my kind of learning curve has been quite steep, you know. Yeah. I mean, I went from, I suppose, not that long ago, being someone who I think, like a lot of people, were like, well, there are people on the streets and there are empty buildings. Surely, you know, how can we not? So why is that not? And I've learned a bit more to go beyond that a little bit more. Yeah start to understand a little bit more about when you hear things like in the paper saying well look these people are choosing to live in these tents because there is emergency accommodation there's accommodation available they choose not to go there I'm trying to find out a bit more about why that might be why people are scared to yeah. use certain services that are yeah. available and why the, those services are it's through no fault of the people working at them because they are beyond capacity of what they can do yes. you know i've started to, to discover there is no bad guy in a room trying to work out how to keep the homeless community down or how to not solve yeah. this problem. What I, all I find is a lot of very good people working incredibly hard, yeah. trying to make you know a difference around these issues, but the system itself is flawed, and so it means that it's not as effective as it could be. People are bumping up against each other, and you know, and, and so my job, I see it, uh, and the job of trying to build on what we've done here this week, mm-hmm. is how can we make it work more effectively? How can we go to all those different people yeah. who are doing incredible work around this, whether it's the, the, the county and the Cardiff Council's emergency uh, yeah. a team, whether it's the, there's a new group that's been set up by the Welsh Government, uh, a homelessness action group, yeah. whether it's the Wallach, the Huggard, the yeah. Hamai, uh, whether it's uh, the people themselves, whether it's uh, Butte Town Surgery receptionists. Yeah. You know, I've talked to all these people, and all I find are people who are really trying desperately to, yeah. to solve this, this issue and help people and beyond what they're capable of. You know, that people are like having breakdowns because of the amount of work they're putting into this. So how can I come into this and start to now do what I can to to make things work a little bit more effectively? You know, I'm not working for an organization that has to look for for the same funding pot as another organization working in this area. That doesn't really incentivize collaboration if everyone who's working in this area is all fighting with each other to try and get the same money. And the people who they would like to hold to account are the ones who decide whether they get the money or not. That's not really helping things because people can't really speak freely and speak honestly about what's going on. And when you see really good organizations like the Wallach, like Cardiff Council, getting in each other's way because what one group wants to do, the other group says, well, no, that's not going to happen. You know, everyone's got their own version of what success looks like in this area. And uh, and they don't necessarily go together. So I'm hoping that the kind of spirit that we've put this tournament on with can continue afterwards yeah. and we can you know, look at how we can be more effective around this and, and the one thing that I always keep coming back to is I, the, the, the prime source of information for that has to come from the people who are experiencing yeah, it one of, the, one of the things you said I, re, I read you was about the importance of if you want to give money to somebody who's on the streets or is experiencing homelessness is to not just give them it but speak to them yeah. and it's that human element which you know, which I genuinely think this tournament is, is highlighted. So. Yeah, one of the great things about the tournament this week is the sense of ownership that the people who are playing yeah. have got, or or indeed the people from the homeless, the local homeless community who have come in and been a, and been a part of it. There is a sense of like this is for us. Mm. Yeah, this is not. We're not here. It's you know, tipping our hat to people and hiding. Yeah. yeah, there's no judgment yeah. or stigma here. It's just you know they they they've taken ownership of this. There was a moment yesterday which will stay with me forever. Um, on the first day of the tournament, before any of this site opened up, because yeah. it's been free for everyone, but you know it hadn't actually started yet, uh, a young guy called Jordan snuck under the gate, mm. got in, and saw the Wallach mobile unit there, yeah. and said, I want to do something, I want to be involved, I want to help, I want to volunteer, I want to do something. And so they were like, okay. And they gave him a purple vest, and he has worked harder than anybody else That's here incredible. all week. He's been going around and getting people there, all the teams to sign that vest. He's had, uh, I signed it, all the bands who have played. And he's been talking about, can we auction it? Can we auction it? I want to go up on stage. Can I, can I go up on stage and, and get this auction? And the money will go to the Wallach and the Street Football Wales. And now I only found out his story yesterday. He's had a tough, tough life. He's got, yeah. you know, he's got a lot of stuff going on. And he has worked tirelessly this week to do this. So eventually I was like, all right, all right, Jordan. I don't know how we're going to do this, but all right. And then we, you know, um, talking to Dan at Working Word, and he was like, right, we should do it online. We do an online auction, nice. you know, secret bids, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're doing. But, the, but uh, uh, Jordan said, you know, I just, 
I just want to be able to tell my story. I just want to get out there and tell my story. Can I, can I come up on the stage one night and tell some story? Again, I was like, oh, God, Jordan. And then we were at, uh, at the Bevan tent where the debates had been happening yesterday, and there was a session on uh, the history of women's football. And, uh, and Professor Laura McAllister opened it up yeah, for questions. That, yeah. And Jordan was there, and he got up, and he got the microphone, and he said, I, 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 gonna, I just want to tell my story, and he started talking. You know, everyone in the tent was like, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> Someone is breaking the rules. This is not what's supposed to happen. But ultimately, I, was, I just felt like this is, this is it. We've created a platform here, yeah? and yeah. here is someone who actually has, he's going through it, See, and he's up there, amazing. and he's telling his story, that's and people are listening, and people were supportive, and just think, yeah, that's, that symbolizes what this is. Really. You that's see that in the eyes of every single player that's out there. Right, mm. I think that's a great way to wrap it up. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Pleasure. Thank Hello, I'm Michael Sheen, and you are listening to a Touchline Rant podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very All much. All the best for that. felt huge.